No. All right, so she starts with Saturn in her first house. So as Saturn goes around, and her sun's right with it too, so she's going to get Saturn hitting the ascendant, the Saturn, and the sun, one, two, three, across a year, every seven years. Well, the angle, the midheaven comes in differently because she has a really big first quadrant, that Capricorn rising. And you see, you see the Pisces intercepted, and she has like almost 120 degrees in her first quadrant, and only just... Like, just less than 60 in her, or just a bit more than 60 and from the midheaven to the ascendant. So that's going to change the Saturn cycles as they go around. So where Saturn's going to start, I'm just talking about it. We're going to, we got it all measured out for the timing. But we look at a chart, we look at the chart, you can see these things. We see the natal chart. We know the natal chart. We can see the progressions are going to go down all her life. They're going to be down first, second, third house, going down to be the writer, the teacher, more of the student more the learning as her life goes on, not more the business person is moving deeper rather than more outer. Um, okay, so we know that. The Saturn and the first house, that's, it's a, a lot of very accomplished people have that they identify to accomplish, especially with Capricorn and Jupiter, their business they need to be successful, they need to make things happen, to make commitments to do them, and her son pulls in on it. But the Saturn will move in at her early age, it went over and conjunct the son, the first year of her life, it conjuncted her son. So we have here, she's born in 61, yeah, 62, January, Saturn conjuncts her sun one year later. Okay, so those were some delays or restrictions with parents and things when she was born. When she was born. Then um, this Mercury and Neptune could also be confusion related to dad or parents and what's expected from her, expected of her. But anyways, this the Saturn comes down, it's gonna go down to the first quadrant and seven, about eight, nine years old, it's going to hit the IC. So when it hits the IC, we look from here, it hits the IC, square, center, square, it hits the I, um, oh, let's try it. So 60, I didn't have, I left, I, I did them, but I didn't write them all out. So they did not written in on here. I was doing this this week, it was just time consuming. Well, okay, so it would have been 99 that it hit the IC. In 99. That's the deep motivation time. It was 69 when she was younger. It was 69. So she's only seven, seven, eight. You know, like, well, actually, seven, eight, 61. Yes, yeah, eight years old, hitting the IC. That's a deeply motivating time. It's hard to know what's happening that age. Something might have been a grandparent dying. Something affected her very profoundly at that time. Usually, it's something between parents or something else that's going on, but that affected her. And she said, move it away from that. And Saturn came in opposed. It hit, the de it hit the descendant in 74. And then, so once it hits the descent, it hits the descendant in 74, then it's gonna go on just as it starts to go out. So it's the descendant, then hits, opposes itself, 14, 15, then opposes the sun. So 14, 15, 16, just when you have your um, beginning social wings of dating and meeting and reading, those were difficult times for her. Those, Saturn was opposing her sun. She was in the happy camper during those times. There were restrictions going on limitation inhibitions going on so and she would have been feeling less than herself or at her lowest like that that's I shouldn't say lowest she's just feeling that's the saturn bide your time like you can't do anything you're stuck you have to put your time in whether it's struggle with school whether it's with parents something was coming in that was affecting her during that time and one of the things with saturn it causes restrictions but once you get past it it's given you some discipline and some strength so you always can gain from Saturn, really can gain from every aspect that way if you're looking at it completely, but Saturn in a more practical sense. Once Saturn gets past the, so it starts about the descent, it's so, okay, I'm really, I'm out here, and then hits the descent, that could have been a teacher, a problem with a teacher or authority figure, but then it builds up, then she gets past that and it starts building up to the midheaven. And in that build up, it's not really gonna, there, there's little things come out, come out, it'll hit the Venus, hit the moon, but when we're looking at the main thing, it's building right up to the midheaven. So when it gets to the midheaven, that's her first peak. That's her first peak, and that peak happened in 89. No, no, not 89, excuse me, 83. 83, 84, it hit the midheaven. So by this time, she's out, she's 
no doubt got herself out of the house and she's working and she's doing something of her own and out in the business or making all money doing her own thing. Okay, then as this moved along, she's riding high on that for a number of years, for, not for that long, because it's a short quadrant, but she goes to the 10th, 11th, as it gets down to the 12th house and hits the ascendant, the identity crisis, it all caves in by the time it hits the ascendant, which was 89. In 89, things stayed, she started feeling insecure. And now I'm not exactly sure when I first met her, but it would have been shortly, not too far around here, or shortly thereafter, not too much. As So the old world came in and the need for a new, new me, who am I, the identity crisis of Saturn or the Ascendant would have come in. And as it goes over, it hits the Jupiter, hits the Saturn return, and then hits the sun. I got to define my goals. So in this period, there's one, somewhere in this period, she decided to start studying astrology. Got her chart done, decided to start studying astrology and start working on it. And that was the beginning of a whole new 10 years, <laughs> the beginning of changing her whole development, her whole understanding of things. So beginning to studying alternative things, beginning to make it, see it, seeing it, it was a natural take for her. So this, okay, so this was a Saturn coming through. Now, 91, it was conjunct the sun. So probably it's around here, more the Saturn on the sun was probably when I met her, not probably in that first part, just probably in this Aquarius part. I don't remember, it could have been a few years later, but it was in this quadrant in any case, but she picked up the astrology. And I know she was in her life, it had, from that point on, it was started, she was changed to astrology. She started adding other things. She started phasing out of other work to be more at home, to have the kid, to build up things. Like it was building up a whole personal direction that's going below the horizon, personal growth, personal development. Okay, now, so that gets down to, it got, goes down, so it hits the IC. That hit the IC 98, 99. By 98, 99, she knows, it's the motivation point. She knows what she doesn't want. She, she doesn't know what she wants. She knows what she doesn't want. And she knows what she has to move away from. But she's not sure what she wants. So she's got her, she's living in a certain world. She's been putting up with certain things, trying to stay. But in 99 is, I got to make something new happen. Now I'm trying to remember 99. Probably as Saturn went over the moon or towards this way, she, got, she had her kid or stuff. So she's got the kid, she's at home. And she knows she can't just stay just like that. Like Saturn's, as you know, it's opposing the midheaven, square opposing the Neptune, but it's low and it's there's something inside changing what her values are. Then it begins to build up. And you just gotta go through steps to get a sense of the person. Then Saturn, this is Saturn on the IC. That's why these graphs are so good, 98, 99, 2000. Then it starts building up the, the developing skills as she's bringing up her daughter. And developing skills. She's also developing yoga. She's also do, doing drumming. She's building up other things during this whole period of time. So she's learning all the time. You know, like, um, so she certainly accumulated a vast knowledge base of things that she knows. Okay, but when you look at her chart, you see her much more as the teacher than the student. So once she's learned it, you know she's not going to sit still with it. She's going to have to use it and do it. Her whole identity is tied up to it. And being in Capricorn, it's meant to come more as one gets older and one's younger. They, you, you work towards it. So the Saturn hit the descendant. <clears throat> and the second time hit the descendant, or first time she was young. And that was 2003. And um, 2003 and 2004. So it hit the descendant. So it starts, it's the point where you're coming out of 15 years of below the horizon. You know, get the home, have the family, have, a, have the kids, build it up. And, and getting that, it starts to go above the horizon. It's just going to want to get out and do things more. It's going to become more ambitious. But at the first point, it Saturn hits the descendant. It's going to come, it's going to oppose it's going to oppose Saturn and oppose the sun. That's the midlife challenge. But opposing the sun is the second time of being by hemmed in, by, by in, where you're stuck, but you have to bide your time. You can't change things. You're stuck with things. And you, so, like, I think this was the point where 
Well, she's struggling to bring up the kid and the time demands and how much she can work and how much she has to take care to get what has to be done, stuff like this. Okay, so the Saturn is building up there, is building up her next career up to the mid heaven, 10th house. By well, the time Saturn goes up to her mid heaven, which would have been 2012, her daughter's got to be 15, 16 years old or so, not completed, but she's she's the mother she what she she's the teacher she's doing things but they were um and she's got her she's built up a certain status for herself i think the challenge came in that her husband had his own ways and that was not so much aligned to what she was doing and this was some of the challenges and having to build this all up and hold it all together for daughter and hold them together in spite of other arguments and other struggles. So um, what would be the most thing that would bug her the most would be somebody didn't do what they promised or disruptions of things not being completed, Moon, Mars, and somebody not being reliable, not being honest, Mercury, Neptune. So not think if somebody, was, if her partner wasn't as, as reliable as, as, dependent, as, she, as she could depend on, it would bug her. It would affect that Mercury. Okay, and um, still, it wouldn't it wouldn't disenfranchise the sun in the first house of the Saturn Jupiter. She still would be determined to go on her own thing, anyways. So Saturn hits her mid heaven. Kids got up. Kids growing up. She's doing fine. This is a great kid. And um, going through here, but the Saturn now is just coming down through the twelfth house. Has just gone over the ascendant. So Saturn going over the ascendant. 2018, and it's it's a it's it's going to conjunct the sun in 2020. First time this coming up this March. So she's just has Saturn in the first house. So there's the identity crisis of Saturn in the first house. There's a need to grow, but there's a frustration with the old. It's happening. So right now, her struggle is she's going through a divorce. She's been finding they're trying to finalize things, take care of the house, take care of things, get everything finished, but so she finally get it completed, so she can start doing some things for herself without being handicapped around it. So this is the struggle in the first house. It's coming along, it's almost there. So the, the, but this is the patience that's coming up. By the time Saturn hits her side, this she's ready to make decisions and go. But it's gonna, Saturn's gonna go forward, it's gonna back up, it's gonna hit the sun again. And um, goes, it's there from February, from March to June of 2020. So. She's seen decisions, she knows what she wants to do. She's trying to get, she's made judgments. So in trying, knowing she wants to get divorced, you're not gonna change her mind around this. So she's, she's there and yet it, it's gonna back up. It goes forward, sits there, backs up and comes back and comes back in December. It's back on the sun. So in your direction, this is the Saturn coming up. the seventh house so she knows she has some things to do herself and what her next commitment is so i think it's tied up to financial solutions and money solutions and having to take care of it finish all the loose ends the daughter's out in the university or and has and, and has moved on now it's time to finish things fix things up so she can make decisions of what she's going to do for the rest of her life or for what she's going to do next and the next isn't so much about career as it is but what more to learn what more to add what more to how more to be who she is you know now um 